Hi everybody, Sam here with Bosch Rextroth. Today I'm going to be walking through an example HMI application that's built on WebIQ. This image here illustrates the concepts I'm going to be covering. So um, on the left, you have kind of your traditional model of how an app will be served off of the Control X core. So you have your WebIQ app and all associated assets. So images, videos, widgets, all of those are packaged together with the app and served off of the core. So you might have any number of cores serving a bunch of different WebIQ apps, all with their assets packaged together in the individual apps. Um, on the right-hand side is the model I'm going to cover today, which is only the WebIQ application is served off of the core and all associated assets, images, videos, anything that is going to be rendered in your browser is coming from some separate server. In my case, I'm running the server on my PC here. It's a Flask app application built in Python, and I'll be diving into this code in some detail later in the video. Um, and then in the browser, here is my application. So all of these images are coming off of my computer rather than the Control X core that I'm running on. Um, and I can point to the server that I want to obtain these assets from with a configuration setting. So if I switch to kiosk one here, you can see the images are different. So with that, let's get into the code. The first piece I'm gonna cover here is the WebIQ project. So here I have my project open. Um, as you can see here, I have a local script um, object attached to the, the main page, the root of my project here. So I'm going to open up that script. It's called load resources here. So what this script is doing is the client side logic of obtaining the, uh, the content from the HTTP server. So in order to do that, I'm using the Axios JavaScript library. Um, and I'll just kind of walk through some of the, the base of the code here. So one of the core functions I have is called load images. So what this is doing is it's gonna go and look out at a specific directory um, on the HTTP server and retrieve first the, the file count of images in that directory um, for this function here. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the image count just to serve as the end of um, a for loop here. So I'm going to start with the first image and then loop through to the image count. Um, and what I'm doing here is just an Axios REST API get request um, at this image folder URL, which is constructed here. It consists of the server IP, the port, and then um, a specific directory. And we'll get into this a little more when I talk about the server side logic here. Um, but for this portion, we're just going to go out, run this get request at this folder URL. Once we receive this response object here, we are going to pull out the image count as the response.data. This is just a, a function of what's returned from the Python server at this endpoint. Um, so then once we have the image count, we can then run through our for loop, which is going to download each image from that directory. So starting with i equals one, we're going to construct an image file URL. So that's again, server IP, port, and then the selected directory, and then your images folder with your image at whichever count you're, you're currently running. Um, once you've constructed the file URL, I'm going to run this git base 64 um, function passing in that image file URL. And all this is doing is, um, I'll, I'll go and show right now. So 
all it's doing is running the axios.git REST API function, um, but then it's going to encode the response data as base64. And the reason I'm doing that, and that's this portion here. So once we have the response as an array buffer, and I'm not gonna dive into the specifics here, but this is just a function to convert that array buffer into a base64 string. And the reason why I'm doing that here is because I'm going to pass this string as the source of an image element um, in HTML. And you can do that um, and it'll display the entire image object. So that's how I'm choosing to handle the files is just save them as a string and then pass them as the image source. So that's the entirety of that function here. Um, loop through, pull in all your images, encode them as base64. And then I'm storing all of those base64 encoded image sources on a, um, an array of image sources that's actually attached to the, the window object. So I'll, I'll show where this is used and in a minute here, but the main point is I'm going to store all of these source images locally in um, the browser. So then I, I have a couple other things that I'm gonna dive into, which are um, custom widgets that are going to read from this window image sources array to populate those slideshows that we saw. So next I will dive into those. I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail on this portion, but I did want to briefly explain how those base64 encoded strings are used to actually display the image in the browser. So this is a, one of the custom widgets that's used in the application it's called image scroller remote. Um, all of the source code is going to be available in the developer community and I'll, I'll link to that um, at the bottom of this video. So um, the first function that uses some of that um, storing image sources um, as an object in the browser is this check for images here. So this is a function um, that's part of the custom widget, image scroller remote. Um, and all it's doing is checking if that image sources object that's attached to the window, um, if it's null or zero length. And that means there's no images available to display. Um, if there are image, image sources as part of this object, then we're gonna loop through them and then add them to um, the, the images that are going to be displayed on this scrolling widget. So that's the gist of it. Um, all it, it's doing is going out to the browser, checking if the image sources exist. If they do, we're going to add them to our internal list of images and loop through them and display using these functions change image forward. So this is if you hit the, the forward arrow, we're going to grab the next index of image and um, grab its source. And then we're going to set the image source to a base64 image with that source string. The last piece of this puzzle is the HTTP server. So the example that I have here is a, um, a, a Flask server built on Python. So Flask is a micro framework. Um, I'll, I'll link to the documentation in the description and also in the developer community, but very easy to work with. Um, essentially you define these routes here. So the first one I have is directories slash directories. So you can see when I hit this route, I'm going to call this function directories, which is going to return an array called DIRS of all of the directories um, using the OS library to kind of scan my operating system for um, what directories exist at the stir path, which is defined here. 
slash resources, which is the, the top level of this project. So what I should expect to see when I hit this route with the given folder structure is Kiosk 1, Kiosk 2, and Kiosk 3. And the way I use this on the WebIQ side is right here. So you can see I'm constructing this URL, which is consists of the IP, the server port, and slash directories. So when we hit that route, I should expect to receive in WebIQ this list of resource directories, which when I go um, to the running application, you can see that's how this drop down list here is being populated is it's going out to the server requesting a list of directories and populating this drop down menu so um, to show you a live example here i have um, you can see in the terminal all of the routes that are being hit um, from my web iq application so if i switch now to kiosk 2 on the web iq side then come back i should see on my server yep i went out and i pulled all of the image files and video and all other intermediary data um, from the python server so that is the essential structure here and i'll be posting this source code in the community